Welcome back to the Rush Hour Roundtable. And First Lady Dr. Jill Biden is taking some heat over remarks she made at a Hispanic Unity Conference in Texas, including her pronunciation of bodegas, as well as comparing Latinos to breakfast tacos. Take a listen. The diversity of this community, as distinct as the bodegas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio. All right, so there was immediate reaction to this. The First Lady did release a statement apologizing uh, for that gaffe. We do wanna bring our panel back though and ask, should more attention be paid to this or are people just too sensitive? Let's start with Panama. I mean, can two things be true at the same time? Like people are too sensitive and people need to do better. Like what this highlights for me is something that I've learned the hard way as a writer and a journalist. When you have a potential landmine, you run that by somebody else. Like, I don't know how nobody read what she had to say. Nobody read those comments. It was like, you know what? Maybe we can tweak this a little bit. Maybe this is not the way we should go. And if you're gonna say bodega, at least you should say it properly. Um, so, I mean, yeah, people are too sensitive. I live online. I live in the, the world of social media. Everybody has an opinion about something. Everybody can't wait to share that opinion. I understand. And it's not always warranted. But people who are in people who have platforms probably need to do a better job of ensuring that they're being as clear as possible, as inoffensive as possible, and just like, why breakfast tacos? Like, of all the things you could say about San Antonio, why was breakfast tacos the one thing you landed on that everybody was like, you know what, that's it. That's the one right there. <laughs> so, you know, she, there, there's a reason why we're talking about this, and it's because it's worth talking about. But at the end of the day, she apologized. Yes. I mean, what are it we It is always do? good, though, to have a second and, and maybe third set of eyes, uh, like you said, particularly when it's a topic that, that could be seen, you know, as sensitive. When you might offend somebody. Yes. When you might offend Absolutely. somebody. The least you can do yes. is ask somebody in the potentially offended group how they might feel about this. Excellent point. Uh, Dan, what do you think? I think the real story, when Panama's on to something, there were eyes that looked at this. Listen, I've worked in politics. There were many people who looked at this before uh, Jill, Biden, uh, Jill Biden gave her speech. Listen, this is, as Panama said, I agree, a small gaffe in the scheme of things. Uh, but having said that, I think it's political laziness and it's it's endemic of a bigger issue, which is these, you know, politicians are so eager to group people together rather than, you know, look at us as individuals. It's, well, if you're Hispanic, you're this or this. And, and we're putting these boxes. And I think it's a small gaffe. He's absolutely right. But in the scheme of things, I think it's evidence of this bigger political malpractice. And by the way, Jill Biden's a really bright lady. She, you know, she has a doctorate degree in education. Maybe she should prove her speeches as well. Touche. Um, I want to make sure that it doesn't seem like we're, you know, picking on one side of the aisle here before we continue this conversation. Our former president, Donald Trump, uh, is known to have had a few gaffes himself. Uh, he at one point mocked a reporter with disabilities during a campaign event uh, in 2015. Let's listen to that. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. I, oh, maybe that's what I said. All right. And, and of course, we also remember Trump tweeting um, a Taco Bell or a Taco Bowl tweet from Cinco de Mayo. That was back in 16. Happy hashtag Cinco de Mayo. The best Taco Bowls are made in Trump Tower Grill. I love Hispanics. Um, and then Melania Trump, because we were talking first ladies here, uh, will also remember her I don't care, do you jacket, which she wore during a trip to a migrant child detention center in 2018. All right, so I want to hear from our other two panelists about this. So, we're, you know, we'll make sure that we're doing this across the board here. We're all humans, you know, so we all certainly make mistakes. We cannot be expected to be perfect. Uh, but Jason, what do you think? 
yeah, everyone makes mistakes. And certainly I think most people would be willing to give someone a pass. The difference is the context in which the coverage has been. New York Times, I believe it was NBC as well, MSNBC didn't even touch this story. And yet when Donald Trump did something, including the Taco Bowl tweet, that was a leading story. That was everywhere. And so you have disparate treatment uh, depending on the person who is speaking. And then on top of things, I, I think why this actually matters, and it's not just me, merely a story about a gaffe. It's happening in the context of Latinos very clearly moving away from the Democrat Party. They're not flocking away to flocking to the Republicans just yet. But there's clearly an issue with Latino voters turning towards Republicans. When you look at the polls, especially some of the, the last several polls, the number one issue for Latinos right now is inflation. That's not a good look for the president. And so you already have a party that I think the perception is that they take for granted minority voters in a general sense, but in particular Latinos. And they're saying, so you're looking at me, you're not addressing my issue on inflation, but I'm just a breakfast taco to you. I think that is why that this is a little bit bigger of a story than just a gaffe. All right, Dina, go ahead. I, I actually saw this story quite a bit in various news outlets, and I had even been looking online Twitter to see how people from San Antonio had responded, because that was really the audience here. And it sounded like quite a bit of them said that they were proud of their breakfast tacos there. Some were also offended by it. So I think that goes to the point that even if somebody looks at this, you know, diverse groups have diverse opinions within their groups. You know, not everybody thinks the same. And I think maybe that's what people were bothered by is nobody really wants to assume that they are supposed to fit into like a box, even if they um, or have an affinity to that box. And maybe that's what there is a need for, is for political leaders to really address people as individuals. I do think, though, the, the clip you showed with the disability, mocking the disability person, to me that goes from the gaffe to an offensive. And to your point, are people too sensitive? Maybe they're too sensitive to gaffes. But I think that sometimes you can cross the line to being rude. And and that, I think, calling somebody sensitive for that, to me, just uh, takes away your responsibility and, and puts it on somebody else. So I do think there's a, a spectrum of what people say and, and how we react to it. All right, I'm, I'm seeing some head nods there. Yeah. I'm just wondering, does anyone think that if equal. Melania Trump or Donald Trump made this comment that it would be treated the same way? The answer is clearly no. Uh, and I think that the media has proven that over and over and over again. And you could say, by the way, that they shouldn't cover it that way, nor should they cover this particular story in an outrageous way. I think that that's a fair point. But there's different ways how they're treating this. Uh, kudos I mean, to there's a history there, right? The history, the history suggests that these things are going to be treated differently. One looks like a pattern. One looks like a potential gaffe. That's the whole point of all gaffes not being created equal. Some seem more just the way of doing business. Some seem more like legitimate accidents or things that probably could have been considered but this wasn't a little an bit accident. more. But, but Panama, I think the difference is, because I think you, you make a very fair point. This was not an accident. This was a scripted moment that multiple people saw. And I have to assume that the first lady didn't read this speech for the first time while on that stage. They didn't think anything of it. And I hear from folks on the left all the time about these implicit biases that you don't even necessarily, they're subconscious. Well, is this a subconscious bias that should be called out by the folks on the left who tell us to be sensitive on absolutely everything? Is this a microaggression? Ironically, the audience seemed very happy about it. I mean, you could hear them cheering in that clip, you know, and I think that's kind of the question of, you know, who is offended? Is it the right. audience that she's speaking to? Or is it maybe all of the rest of us who like to overanalyze what people say? And maybe it's a little bit of both. It could be. Um, props out to Dr. Jill Biden for at least apologizing, something that our former president never really did. Did she apologize or did her spokesperson apologize on Twitter? Because well, I didn't an apology apologize. was issued, <laughs> nevertheless. All right, right. panel, thank you so much for that. Issued. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.